welcome to Andy's Garage. I'm Andy Phillips. Today we're going to be fixing a vehicle with the dreaded P0300 random misfire code. Let's go ahead and get started. So for this video, we're going to be working on the vehicle outside. As you can see behind me here, the garage, I got a lot going on in there. I got two vehicles that are being worked on, other things. We got the fence project. Got a lot of stuff going on here. So unfortunately, we're out here. It is a very slow misty drizzle unfortunately but we got to get it done so just to kind of give you a little explanation what the p0300 is that's a random misfire if you're getting any kind of misfires on your vehicle normally you check your diagnostic reader plug into your obd2 port see what it's doing if it gives you like a p0300 series those are usually misfires normally it'll be a 301 that means it's cylinder one 302 is cylinder two that's how it works but if you get the 300 that means that multiple misfires are happening and it can't really tell which one. That one's a little trickier because then you have to kind of diagnose. If it's telling you specifically what cylinder, then you can go right to it and look at your spark plugs, your cables, ignition coil packs, whatever the case is, and it's easier to fix that one. When you're dealing with the random one, then you've got to do a little bit of a process of elimination. And that's what we're going to do in this video. This is not a how to fix. This is more so fixing one. So I have one and you're going to be tagging along with me as we go through and do the process of elimination and get it fixed and then we'll see how we fix it in this video. If you want to see one that's more in depth, this is not the one because there's other things you can test if you're getting it and what we cover in this video does not help you. But in a lot of cases, what we're going to cover here will be your problem. So let's get into the vehicle. I'm going to connect to the OBD2 port and we're going to show you what we're, what the error code that we're getting and then we'll start the uh, process. We're connecting now. This is what we're getting. This scan tool is cool too because it shows you all the things that are failing right here. Now some of this is because I'm doing work to the vehicle so the ECU still needs to be reset with a, a driving cycle to go through it. But because of the misfire if you're getting any reds on here you're going to fail your emissions test if your state has that so we can see here it's the p0300 engine misfire all right so now that we saw what we're dealing with here it's telling us pretty much nothing we're going to pop the hood and what i'm going to start with is a lot of times with misfires whether you would be getting a specific one for a cylinder like a 301 302 whatever you want to look first of all at your spark plugs and also your spark plug wires because a lot of times if they're starting to get dirty or if the gapping is wrong and everything is not right on point with the the timing and the firing of everything you're going to get misfires also if your spark plug wires are you know have breaks in them if you want to see a video i did where you can test that i'll have a link across the top also down in the description but it, if your spark plug wires spark plugs are needing replacement that can cause that Let's head over here. We're going to pop the hood and uh, we'll start there. Now, in this particular vehicle, we're not going to start off with spark plugs and the cables on this thing because I already replaced those. We had an issue with them previously, so they were recently replaced, gapped properly. You want to make sure that the gap is exactly to spec. If you want to see a video I did on different gapping tools and how to gap your spark plugs properly, also to torque them properly, I'll have links across the top, also down in the description. But anyway, so the spark plugs, spark plug wires, they are good to go because those are brand new. They've been replaced. The next thing we're going to move to is the ignition coil packs. Now, ignition coil packs, you got to be careful. Sometimes people will buy unbranded cheap ones from China online. Do not touch those. You may get a lucky batch now and then, but for the most part, if they are not to the manufacturer specs even slightly off, it can cause misfires as well. So you want to make sure that you stick to the OEM product. This particular vehicle is a General Motors vehicle. So you either want to use GM Genuine Parts or AC Delco. For whatever vehicle you're dealing with, you want to see what the OEM part from the manufacturer is and stick to that when you're dealing with O2 sensors, ignition coil packs, things that are precise like that. You don't want to be gambling with that. So let's take a look here we're going to look at the ignition coil packs and then uh we're going to go ahead and swap those out and see what happens after that on this particular vehicle which is a 5.3 liter gm v8 you're going to have an ignition coil pack for each cylinder so you have one here one here one there one there on the other side same thing you'll have four 
So if you have a six cylinder, you'd have six, four cylinder, you're gonna have four. Older cars, you'll have an ignition coil pack sometimes as shown here, which is gonna pretty much cover all of it instead of having individual ones. This little four cylinder has one big ignition coil pack and then the four connect into it instead of individual ones. But for this one here, we have these. And just looking at these, they, they look generic because I don't see any markings. Normally with AC Delco and things, it'll be stamped on here. So I'm looking here. They look like they're generic ones. It could be the quality or they could just be failing if they're older. So we're going to change those out. I have a set of AC Delcos that I picked up for this because it's a GM vehicle. And um, if that's the issue, that, that will solve the problem. I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle so you can see exactly what's happening with this thing. Ignore the clicking in the background, but you can see the vibration. The check engine light is obviously on. And I'm hoping it came through clearly in the video what I was experiencing here in person. But the engine was running rough. When we looked at the back, the exhaust was very sputtery. It was very strong odor coming out of that. And then as we saw, also there was a check engine light that was generated. And I was trying to hold the phone on the vehicle itself so you could see the vibration hopefully you could see that but either way bad situation and on top of that we did check the code at the beginning we see it's a p0300 so as mentioned already spark plugs and cables are done they were done already but that's where i would start if you haven't done anything yet so the next thing i'm going to do is we're going to go through we're going to swap out these ignition coil packs so with the battery disconnected now we can disconnect them and start changing them out this particular vehicle, the ignition coil packs are mounted to this bracket. So we're just going to remove the bracket itself and then we'll be able to slide it out and then pop all four on this side, do the same on the other side. Um, but the first thing we need to do is disconnect the spark plug cable here from the ignition coil packs right here. You want to be careful you don't damage the connections, otherwise you're going to have to replace the, the cables as well. So I'm going to take these off and then uh, we'll be back to remove the bracket so we can get that out and take a look at these ignition coil packs. You want to disconnect the negative battery cable before you start uh, swapping out the ignition coil packs because of the electronics and that's a good practice when you're doing any electrical stuff that way you don't have any shortage. Pop that off there. Hose pliers are good because um, sometimes you can't get a good grip and you don't want to pull it from the thin part of the cable where you can rip it out from the connector here. So with the hose pliers, you can just grab it up here on the thicker end, and then we can just gently work it down like that. I just heard it pop off right there. We'll take our time, because like I said, you don't want to damage it, and then you're having to replace everything else. So that one's been removed. And now I'm going to do the other ones, and then we'll be back to do the, the, uh, the mounting bracket. Let's loosen off. We'll slide this out. And this is good because they're all mounted right here. Otherwise, you're having to take all these little things off and get to it. So you're just unplugging the main harness and then popping off the bracket. So let's take a look at these compared to the OEMs, and that might be our issue. Here's everything. However, I did notice something. If we look here, look at the oil. There's some oil that got here. This vehicle, we're doing a lot of work to it. So there were some uh, valve cover gaskets, uh, valley pan gaskets, different things that were replaced that were leaking. This was not checked, but you, you want to check your connections because right here, that oil in there can definitely cause electrical issues that would cause misfires. Let's head over to the other end of the plug and see how that looks, but we're going to have to clean that. Let's see here. Yeah. You have oil in there. That's not good. So I'm going to spray that out. I have some of this um, electronic cleaner by CRC. This is good stuff. It's made specifically for these sensitive electronic parts. These plugs dries fast. We're going to spray all that out. If you want to see, a, a, I did a more in-depth video. I'll have a link across the top, also down in the description, where I show how to clean electrical connectors with this stuff. It's really good stuff. But I'm going to spray those out. We'll let it dry out before we reconnect it. But while it's drying, we'll swap out the uh, coil packs. You can see the 
oily color coming out of there. So that could definitely cause it as well. See that? Look at this. All that oily junk. Spray it out real good. You want to clean it really good in there. And then obviously you want to find out what the cause was. Like I said, we already replaced the gaskets. We had some bad issues that we fixed. But if you're seeing oil like that, you want to definitely trace the problem and get that fixed. Still. This is bad. All right. All right. So now let's take a look. So I have the AC Delco part here. And we see the comparison. They look similar. However, and I'll, I'll show a close up, but this has the, oh, the AC Delco stamp on it with the part number, which I don't know if this has. We'll take a look at that. We'll take this first one, unplug the harness. And you got to be careful with these little tabs. They can be delicate and break, so just go easy on it. No branding on this at all. And here's a close-up. You want to stay away from this junk. This is that Chinese unbranded crap. It's a lot cheaper online than the, the AC Delcos or the, the manufacturer ones. However, you get what you pay for. And if these things aren't specific to the vehicle, like fine-tuned, you're going to have these misfires. So there's a good chance this is our problem. So we're going to go through, swap all these out, put the AC Delcos on, and then we'll be back to reinstall everything and test it. Before I put the AC Delcos on, I just want to show a little comparison here. This is a really good knockoff here on the left, unbranded, but a very good knockoff. A little bit different, like right there, the connections, a little bit different. But overall, it's a very good knockoff. But as you can see, AC Delco, it's stamped right there. Obviously, it had the box. You do have to be careful because I did hear that uh, there's some Chinese knockoffs coming out now where they even have some of that on there. So you just got to be careful what you're what you're getting into. So if the, if the deal is too good to be true, I'd stay away from it. Everything as we saw has been swapped out. We have the AC Delcos in, everything's connected. The um, plugs have been cleaned out with that CRC cleaner. I'm gonna get a close up so you can see the plugs and see how clean they look. And then I'm going to reattach this. I'm not going to show all of this, but I'm just going to reattach it. And then I'm going to do the other side. And then we'll be back to test the vehicle and see if it uh, didn't solve the problem. Everything is back on. So now what I'm doing is reconnecting the... Um, spark plug wires here to the ignition coil packs and you want to make sure when you do it and I'm going to do one here I don't know if you can see it right there you want to go gentle but you want to make sure that everything connects so you'll hear some clicks I don't know if you heard that the two little clicks of it getting a nice connection you can see how we have them nice and firmly all the way up because if you don't have a good connection that can cause problems too so Get this one on here. There we go. Nice and solid. We heard everything click good. Because if those aren't connected properly or if there's any breaks in that, that can also be a problem. I'm not going to show this side because it's the same thing. And this, this video is not on how to fix this vehicle, but how to fix the P0300. So... I'm going to get this one out. We're going to swap it out for the AC Delco. Same thing. Check the connections. If they're dirty, we're going to clean those off. We want to make sure all the connections are good. We want to make sure that the ignition coil packs are to spec. And then we're going to go ahead and test it. And I, I believe that's going to solve the problem. But if not, then we'll move on to the next one.
All of the ignition coil packs on this side have also been replaced. The connections were checked. Didn't need to be cleaned on this side as they did here on this side here. And um, in case you're wondering, this is actually a Chevy Trailblazer EXT with the 5.3 liter Vortec, the GM V8 that I'm working on. If you want to see more videos as far as this vehicle and more in depth pertaining to this actual engine, you can check out, I'll have some links down in the description. I've done a lot of work to this, to this vehicle, this engine. Now that everything is done, I'm going to reconnect the battery. And one thing to keep in mind when you're doing your ignition coil packs, um, as we saw, we did check the connections and make sure they were clean. But when you're also connecting your spark plug uh, cables to the ignition coils, as we saw earlier, make sure you have a very good connection with that as well. So let's go in the vehicle. We're going to start it up, see how that looks. We'll run a diagnostic and see if that solved the problem. If it didn't, then we'll move on to the next. So we did have the battery disconnected. So obviously the check engine light is going to be out because all that got reset. So we're going to plug into it. Check it. See how that looks. Right now, it's idling very smooth, very smooth. All right, everything's been cleared out. I'm going to take the car for a spin. We're going to take it for a drive, let it go through its driving cycle and see how it looks. As you can see, no check engine lights, cars running great, idling smooth. Well, that looks like that took care of the problem. Normally, driving this vehicle, if you would clear the codes on it, as soon as you would start it and just let it idle, you would see the check engine code come right back saying that there was an issue. As we saw, we took it for a drive. We accelerated, had it up to high speeds. No check engine lights came back on. The car's idling a lot better. So that concludes this video. And what I wanted to say is a lot of times when you're you're getting the uh, uh, random misfire. You want to start with the cheaper, easier things to do. Spark plugs and the cables. A lot of times those could be the issue. Like mentioned already, if they're not gapped properly or if they're dirty, you want to make sure that you replace those. That's a simpler fix. Next, move up to the ignition coil packs. But you don't want to be diving into more extensive and expensive causes first without checking these, um, the easier ones first. As we saw here, the, existing, the ignition coil packs Probably cheap no-name brands was the issue. When we put the AC Delcos on there, it looks like it took care of the issue. If that hadn't taken care of the problem, the next thing that I was going to do is check the fuel pressure. You want to make sure that your fuel pump, pressure regulator, things like that are working properly and you're getting the correct fuel pressure for your vehicle. If that's too low, that can also cause the random misfire because you're not getting the right fuel air um, and uh, spark ratio on that. If you want to see how to check your fuel pressure, I have a couple of links down in the description where I show how to check it using your Schrader valve, or if your vehicle doesn't have a Schrader valve, how you can also check it. So that wraps up this video. I hope this video was informative for you, helped you out with maybe any issues you're having with your vehicle if you're running into the same uh, P0300 uh, code. Please send me any questions and comments. I would love to hear from you. And as always, I appreciate all the support. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.